Welcome back. Today we're going to learn about decimals, their place value, and their relationship with fractions. Curtis, can you think of any reason to learn about decimals? Hi, I'm Curtis, and I like decimals because it helps me count my money. I think he said money. If so, yes, money. Great reason to learn about decimals. If you had a lemonade stand, you would want to use decimals to find out exactly how much money you're making. I do have a lemonade stand. It's my side hustle. So why do we have decimals? Well, they're kind of like fractions. They're going to help us represent part of a number. Like if we had half of something or a quarter of something, we can also use a decimal to write the fraction. Okay, let's look at the number 37. That is a whole number. If we were to write 37 and 1 half, that is a mixed number. If we wrote it in decimal form, 37.5, that is in decimal form. But it's also helping us just write part of a whole number. And that's why we have decimals. Hey Curtis, do you have an easy way to remember numbers and place values when it comes to decimals? I like to think of the hundredths place like a penne, because one hundred pennies equals one whole dollar, and that is what the hundredths place is for. So if it was a fraction, it would be one out of one hundred, because one hundred pennies makes one whole dollar, and that's an easy way to remember it. For the tenths place value, I like to think about dimes because it's the same as 10 cents, which means we need 10 shiny purdy dimes to equal one whole dollar. And as a fraction, one tenth, like one dime, could be written as one over 10 because 10 of these will give us one whole number. The same goes for a quarter, except we will use both the tenths and hundredths place. In the tenths place we would have a two because it's like having two dimes and five pennies. That is the same as one quarter. So we represent the two here as a fraction and we can also represent the five one hundredths as a fraction and that is the same as one quarter or one over four. Hey Curtis, thanks, that was great. You want to see something that ain't so great? Hi, I'm Curtis, and this is County Line Lemonade, made with all natural lemon powder, uh, organic artificial sweetness, and uh, twice refined cane sugar. Still a little salty from the soup. Well, it looks like Curtis officially has a lemonade stand. Let's go ahead and get back to the math. So, let's say we have, well, five and a quarter lemons. It's really not the five that's the problem. It's this little guy, the quarter. So, how do we write one quarter using a fraction? Well, first, let's do our whole number, the five. Let's add our fraction. One quarter. All right, now we want it in decimal form. I know that one over four is equal to 5.25 because one over four is equal to 5.25. So I'm using this number because it's going to help us look at the place value of this two. We call this the tenths place. And where this five is, we call the hundredths. And that's our place value to the right of the decimal. We know this is the ones. Here's our decimal. We know we have two in the tenths place and five in the hundredths place. Okay, you might be wondering, how do we just know that one-fourth equals 0 
Well, any fraction is actually just a division problem where we take the top number or the numerator and we divide it by the bottom number, the denominator. So this really reads 1 divided by 4. So I could rewrite this fraction as a division problem. It looks a little strange because we're not used to dividing by a bigger number. Let's see how we do that in the calculator. Okay, we can just do 1 divided by 4 and we get 0 0.25. Okay, we got 0.25. Works out in the calculator. Let's try it in long division now. For the long division, we know that 1 over 4 is equal to 1 divided by 4. So I want to set that up with the 4 on the outside and the 1 on the inside. And we might say, how many times does 4 go into 1? Well, it doesn't. So what we need to do is actually add a decimal point and another number. We'll just write a zero because one is the same as 1.0. Now we have to ask ourselves how many times does four go into ten? Four goes into ten two times. But since we added the decimal here we need to put it here. And now it's just a regular long division problem. Two times four is eight. I'm going to subtract and I get two. Once again, 4 cannot go into 2, so I'm going to add another 0 and bring it down. Now, 4 goes into 20 5 times, that's right, and 5 times 4 is 20 with no remainder. Here, we can see in long division that 1 divided by 4 is 0.25, just like the calculator. Okay. Let's try one more quick one. 3 fifths, or 3 divided by 5. Let's go ahead and put that in our calculator and see what we come up with. Okay, we can just do 3 divided by 5, and we get 0 0.6. Good. 0 0.60. Perfect. Let's test it in long division and see if we get the same answer. Once again, 5 does not go into 3, but I can add a decimal point and a 0, because 3 is the same as 3.0. Now, how many times will 5 go into 30? Yes, 6. And don't forget your decimal point in the answer. It's very important. 6 times 5 is 30 with no remainder. Once again, we got 0 0.6, which is the same as 3 over 5, 3 fifths or 3 divided by 5. Hey Curtis, do you have any helpful hints for converting decimals to fractions and fractions to decimals? Rather than always convert, I like to have memorized some of my decimal to fraction conversions. I know anything in the tenths place can be written over 10 as a fraction all the way down to 9. If I have 0 0.2, I know that is just 2 over 10. Any number in the tenths place can just be written over 10. Once again, like 0 0.9 would just equal 9 over 10. With the hundreds place, I have also memorized that 0 0.01 equals 1 over 100. What that tells me is anything in this place value can be written over 100. So, if I had 0 0.09, I know that is equal to 9. And since it's in the hundredths place value, I'm going to use 100 as my denominator or bottom number of the fraction. Now, this works and is a little complicated because we can also have a number in the tenths place. So let's look at 0 0.38. 0 0.38 can be easily written as a fraction. We will use the last number and that place value as the denominator, which is 100. And now we put both the tenths and the hundredths place on top. 
and that equals 38 over 100. You can always reduce from there if possible. Once you have memorized some of the easy ones like 0.25 equals 1 fourth or 1 quarter, you can always come up with other ones by adding them together or just thinking about it. So 0 0.50 is really like 25 plus 25 is 50. So I know that this is 2 over 4 or 1 half because it's just 2 25's. Just like 25 plus 25 is 50, 50 plus 25 is 75. So I know that if I go 0 0.075, that is just 3 25's like 3 of those. So I can write 3 over 4. And if I add 25 one more time, kind of like having 4 quarters, I would just have one whole number or equal to four quarters. Seems to make sense to me. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Maybe buy your girlfriend some flowers or a t-shirt and get a cold can, county line lemonade.